What's up guys, Adam here with another home improvement video. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you and installing this Sense electrical monitoring device. So I'm actually really excited about installing this. I've been looking at this for quite a while now, and this is not a sponsored video yet, <laughs> maybe, maybe later, but right now I paid for this because I like a lot of smart home stuff that's out there right now. And I believe that this can definitely make your home a little bit smarter and maybe even save you some money in the short and long term, depending. What this device basically does is it monitors your energy consumption in your house. And not the same way that your electric company does by sending you a bill at the end of the month saying you use this much power, so you owe us this much money. This is actually going to learn over time all of the devices and electronics that you have plugged into your home. And so by doing that, it's actually gonna help you in a couple different ways. One, it might be pointing out to some things that you didn't even know were running, maybe in the middle of the night, that's just sucking power for no reason at all. And it could be during the day as well. And another thing is by breaking everything down and knowing what device is using what, maybe it can tell you that there are certain devices that don't need to be running during certain times or maybe it can point to a specific thing like a fridge or a freezer that maybe is a little bit older or is going out to where maybe you need to look at replacing it with something that's a little bit more energy efficient. So in those regards, it's pretty cool. It can save you money in the short term there. And then of course, over time, if you know exactly what is using electricity, it can obviously save you money there too. Something else that's pretty cool is you can set up notifications to where if, for instance, you leave the stove on too long, that you would get a notification that it says, hey, your stove's been on for over an hour, you might wanna go take a look at this. So it's pretty cool in that regard that maybe it also serves as a safety feature and not just a way of telling you that you need to turn something off to save on energy. All right, so this is everything that comes in the box. Over here is the instruction manual. You know, when you're installing this, make sure you're following this step by step. Over here is an exterior mounting device. Up here is the antenna and wiring that then goes into the sense device. This down here is the wiring harness for the sense device. Uh, this here plugs into the sense and then at the other end, you've got some leads that will go into a double pole breaker. In this case, we'll be using this 15 amp double pole breaker and we'll get into more of that during the installation. Over here are our current sensors and they will clamp around the service mains coming into the panel. And of course, here is the sense itself and everywhere that things get plugged into it. Now we can get started with the installation, but before we start installing anything, the first thing you need to do is go to your main panel and turn off the main circuit breaker that's supplying the power to your home. And once that's off, we can get started with the installation itself. All right, so now that we've got the main power off, we've got the cover off of the panel here, the next step is going to be deciding where we're going to put our sense. And there's a few different places you could put it depending on your situation. If your panel is completely recessed, what you can do is it can go in the box somewhere and then you would have to put a hole, get one of the knockouts out of the side or the top of your box and you could take the antenna adapter and just stick it through that hole. If it's inside of the wall, that's okay. It just needs to be able to be outside this metal container so it can have the best reception it can. So since I'm gonna be putting my sense down here in the bottom right, I'm gonna need for one of these knockouts to be removed so then I can run the antenna wire outside of the metal panel. All right, so now that we got that knockout removed, we can now take our antenna wire and this is the side that's gonna go through the side of the panel. As you can see, it's got some little clips here and here, so as it goes through the metal on the side of the panel, it's going to shrink down briefly, and then as soon as it gets through the other side, it'll pop back out, and this will be popped into place and stuck in position. All right, so now that we've got the antenna adapter through the side of the panel, we can now take the antenna itself and screw it to the antenna adapter.
we can now take the other end of the antenna adapter and screw it into the top of the sense device here. So now we can take the current sensors with the plug and also the power adapter and we can insert both of these into the sense device. The current sensors plug has a black tip and it goes into the black female receiving port down here on the bottom. The power cord has a white adapter and it goes into the white female input here on top. All right, so now we can take our current sensors and we can attach them to the service mains, which is gonna be this black wire here and this red wire here. And they can go on either one. It doesn't matter which one you put on which one and they can go on either up or down. It doesn't really matter as long as they're both the same. So this side has a label and this side does not have a label. So in my case, I'm just gonna take the labels and have them facing up on both of them. Now, as you might have noticed, there is no main power switch here on this panel. The reason for that is because the main power switch to the house is actually out at the meter and the meter panel. The only thing that's upstream from here is that switch, my power inlet box for my generator, and a whole house surge protector. Everything else is downstream from where these current sensors are. So it's going to get everything that's in the house. You can even put these on sub panels if you want. It just depends on what you're wanting to track. All right, so now we need to hook up the power to the sense device with these three wires here. Got a red, black, and white wire. And those are going to plug into that 15 amp breaker that I showed you at the beginning. And the reason we're gonna go with a 15 amp double pull breaker is because the instructions specifically say that since the sense draws less than 0.1 amps, you should use the smallest 240 volt breaker available to your panel. So that's gonna be a 15 amp double pull breaker. If you don't have room in your panel for an additional 240 volt breaker, the instructions say that you can basically piggyback onto another breaker so you could put it on some other 15 amp double pull breaker, whatever breaker you have that's the smallest, and you can essentially hook it in with another circuit. And the reason they say you can do this is because since it pulls such little amperage, it's really gonna have no effect on the circuit itself. So if you have to do that, you can, but if you don't have to do it, it would be preferred to just go get a 15 amp double pole breaker and put it in your panel. All right, so the first wire I'm gonna hook up is gonna be this white wire, which is our neutral wire, and that is going to screw down in the neutral bus bar over here. We can now take our red and black wires and they're going to attach to that 15 amp double pull breaker. And the wires are gonna go up in the bottom part of it here where these holes are. They'll go in those little slots and then you'll tighten them down using these screws on the front. You can put the red and black wire in either of the holes. It doesn't matter which one you put them in. And make sure that when you're tightening these down, make sure they're real nice and tight. Give them a little pull just to make sure that they're not going to come out. And now those are in there nice and secure. As you put the new breaker in, the bottom of this breaker is going to hinge on the very bottom of that metal there. So it goes in at an angle tilted out. Once you feel that it's in place on that metal, you can rock it up and pop it into place. All right, so the main power's back on and now all we gotta do is flip our double pole breaker here. And once we do that, it'll send power to the sense device. If everything was installed correctly, we'll get one chime. If it beeps repeatedly, then that means that something is not set up right. We need to check our wiring. And if we don't get any sound at all, then the sense device is just not even be able to start up. So let's go ahead and flip it on and see what we got. All right, so there was that chime we were looking for letting us know that everything was installed correctly and wired correctly on the sense device itself. Now all that's left is going into the sense app and finishing the setup through the app. All right, so once you've got your account set up, you've input all of your details for your account, your password, hooking it up to your Wi-Fi, 
this is about what your screen's going to look like. Now I'm using a web browser on a PC just so it makes it easier for you guys to kind of see everything instead of me trying to screen record on a phone. They're going to look very similar. However, the app has way more options on it. Like here it says other. It says other because it hasn't detected any devices yet. So it's just showing the house as a whole and what it's using. As devices are found, there'll be more and more bubbles and they'll show what each particular device is using. Over here on the left is a timeline and any time that a device has been added or once it's recognized devices and they turn on and off, it's going to record everything over here with a timestamp and it's going to give you important messages as well. If you go over to trends, what this is, is after you've gone into the settings, you've put in the square footage of your house, where you live, how many occupants, all of that stuff, it's going to use its algorithm to then take your scenario and the wattage that you're using per day and compare it with other homes in your area that are similar to yours. If we click on meter, this is a real time view of your power usage. So you can see here there's this big spike and for quite a while that's the air conditioning unit coming on. But I've actually experimented with this turning light switches on and off which are not going to use a whole lot of power and it's amazing how quick this device records the change in the amount of wattage being used. It's just really interesting to see it go up and down. If we go over here to devices and click on other again, once your sense starts figuring out all of the devices that are connected, it's going to start listing them here, all of your usage, and it's going to take some time for this to happen. But once it starts doing that, you're really going to get a lot of information. If we click on always on, what this is going to be monitoring, like it says up here, your always on represents your home's vampire load. So it's going to be looking for devices that are running maybe when they shouldn't be in the middle of the night. And it's going to be trying to pinpoint what devices those are so that maybe you can make some changes and not just wasting money while you're sleeping on devices that don't necessarily need to be running. So that's just a brief overview of what the Sense can give you as far as information goes. Like I said, there's way more information in the app that you can get than just using the web-based platform. There's a lot of things that this can, thing can be connected to that just makes it even that much smarter. All right, guys, so there's a brief overview and a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to install this Sense electrical monitoring device. It really wasn't too difficult, but if you still don't feel comfortable in doing it yourself, then definitely consider calling your locally licensed electrician. They're gonna be able to come out and probably install this in about 30 minutes. We also went over a few of the features of this device, and as you can see, it, it's pretty cool. It can do quite a few things, and a lot of those things can actually add quite a bit of value. Now, if you found the information this video would be helpful to you, please let me know by leaving a comment down in the comment section down below and also giving the video a thumbs up. It really helps the video out. And if you like how-tos and do-it-yourself type videos for around your home like this one, I've got a new video coming out every single week and there's quite a few that you can go check out now. So please consider subscribing to the channel and I hope to see you in the next video.